I believe that the best way to learn any type of programming related activity is to build projects and put your skills to use. And data science is no different. My name's Sid, I'm a first year computer science major at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'll be giving you three data science project ideas that I think are really helpful for beginners to solidify your foundations and basics so that you can become the best data scientist that you can be. Uh, these three unique ideas I tried to put my own unique twist on, but sometimes it's just good to stick to the classics because they've been tried and tested by many different people. So without further ado, let's get straight into the first idea. The first project idea that I'm suggesting is the Titanic classification problem. Now, you've probably heard of this a million times by now, but if you're not familiar with it, Basically, there's a data set containing information about all the passengers on the Titanic, uh, things like their age, uh, sex, cabin number, whether they were in first class or not, and a lot of other information so that people can use that information to try and predict whether somebody that was on the Titanic would survive or not based on all of these demographic information. Now, this has been a challenge that's been going along for going on for a really long time. I think almost 10 years now, I think maybe even more and has been going on on this website called Kaggle, which is a data science contest competition that contains a bunch of data sets, thousands of really cool and interesting data sets that you can use for a variety of different projects. And each data set usually comes accompanied with some sort of challenge or contest, such as making a model that can predict who survives on the Titanic with the highest degree of accuracy. And that's what I'm suggesting this project for you to be. Get this data set and then build a model to see uh, to see whether you can predict who would survive on the Titanic or not. This is a pretty interesting project because, you know, there's a lot of interesting factors that go in. For instance, women and children were going to get off the boat first, and women and children that were in first class were going to get off the boat first. So if you were a man, so if you were a man who was in the third class cabin, then it was very unlikely that you're going to survive on the Titanic. So here's how you would approach this project. First of all, you have to make a Kaggle account and then download the data set, obviously. And I suggest you make a Kaggle account because it's very helpful for a lot of different reasons and getting cool data sets. Second, after you have the data, what you're gonna to wanna to do is clean the data up and then do some exploratory data analysis. You know, see how many people from each category survived, how many women survived, how many men survived, what percentage of men and women survived. You know, looking at these things will really help you in your, go in your goal of making a model to predict who survives. After you do some exploratory data analysis, you'll probably realize that there are some cool uh, data points that you think are more closely related to actually being able to determine who survives. Once you have those data points figured out or your inputs or your features, then you can pick some sort of machine learning model to actually build your classifier off of. Some examples might be using a logistic regression model to identify whether somebody would survive or not. You could either implement these by hand or use a pre-built uh, or use a library that comes with these machine learning models attached, such as scikit-learn, which is basically what everybody uses for the machine learning algorithms. And I'll leave a link to it in the description along with some documentation for you guys to check out, um, as well as a link to the original Kaggle dataset for you to go. Good luck on this project. I think it's really cool and it's a great way to get introduced to the field of data science. If you liked the video so far, then consider subscribing. Only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed and it's totally free and you can always unsubscribe later. Back to the video. The second project idea that I'm giving you guys is coming up with some sort of model to make predictions for any type of sport that you're into. I think most of the people watching this video are probably interested in at least one sport and you've definitely looked up the stats to a sport before. For this project, I suggest using data from one of these sports that you're interested in, like basketball, soccer, uh, baseball, whatever, and then trying to predict what team is gonna win when they face off against each other or what individual player is gonna win when they face off against each other. Most sports have a ton of data for this. I know especially basketball has a ton of historical data about teams and their head-to-head -head matchups and teams uh, like individual performances along with the individual performances of players. And this is something that a lot of people are interested in. So there are a lot of resources out there. This is a per this is a problem that's harder than the Titanic problem because first of all, the data isn't automatically given to you in a pretty clean format already. You're gonna have to source the data from somewhere, then clean that data up and then try and figure out what features you think are important to actually make a prediction on what team is gonna win a game. Is it gonna, are you gonna have to take into account whether they're on a win or a loss streak, um, their past matchups, like their historical head-to-head uh, -head, head -head matchups against each other. There's a lot of things that you're gonna have to take into account and this becomes a hard problem then. But if you have the time and you really wanna know more about a sport, I think this is a really great way to go about that because you'll learn a lot about, first of all, data science because there's a lot of hard work to be done obtaining and cleaning the data and also taking the features. 
but also just get some more statistical insight into a sport you love, which is why I love this project. If you want a great place to start off with this, with uh, a lot of documented resources and also pretty good clean data already available, then I suggest trying out doing sports prediction for the March Madness College Basketball Tournament. Uh, it's basically just a the playoffs of the college basketball season that happen in March every year. That's why it's called March Madness. And there's a lot of data and every year, a lot of people try and make a model that can predict a perfect March Madness tournament bracket. And I suggest you try it. It's really good fun. There's a lot of resources and videos on how to do this already, along with some clean data. And I'll leave links to those in the descriptions down below so you can go ahead and try it yourself because it really is really fun. If you happen to be into esports or video games, then try and do this for the ranked games that you play in like Valorant, CSGO, or League of Legends. You, companies provide APIs for all these games uh, to get data, so you can definitely get the data for this, but it's gonna be a little bit harder. Anyways, there's a lot of cool things that you can do in this category, and I just suggest you pick something fun and interesting that'll make sure that you actually get to finishing the project, because that's what really matters. This is a project idea I came across recently while working on my Hack MIT project, and you can watch my experience about that here. And essentially, I was using the YouTube transcript API to get transcripts for YouTube videos, and I realized that there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this data. This project is particularly useful if you're interested in doing natural language processing, or NLP, and it serves as a great introduction to that field. A great idea for beginners with this project is to get the transcripts of the YouTube videos of a YouTube channel that they really like, and then perform sentiment analysis on it to identify the tone of the video, whether it's a positive tone or a negative tone, and see how it changes across videos or across channels when the content of those channels changes and the topics that they cover greatly changes. The procedure for this project is pretty similar to the ones listed above, and as many data science projects go, the first step is actually collecting the data. And for this project, you can do it using the YouTube API. You've feed it in some URLs to YouTube videos, and then it'll get the transcripts for you. And once you have the transcripts, you now have the text data, but now you actually have to clean this text data. And there's a few things that you might have to do to it. One is remove words that are really common. And these are words that we call stop words. Things like the, a, and, a bunch of articles you might have to remove. And common words in the English language are removed because a lot of people say that, oh, you know, there's not much meaning being provided to those sentences by them being there. What we really care about um, are the other words, the more important words, the words that show up less frequently. You also might get transcripts that contain nonsensical characters or random end of line characters that you don't really need, and you'll have to clean those up. There's a lot of stuff to do with cleaning up text data, and I'll leave a link in the description down below to help you guys with some. Thankfully, there are some libraries for natural language processing like Spacey and NLTK that already do this automatically for you as long as after you import them and use the functions that they have. And this makes it really easy and also really fast. Once you've cleaned up your transcripts from YouTube, you're ready to move on to actually building your sentiment analysis model and, and doing sentiment analysis on those transcripts. NLTK comes pre-packaged with a model called Vader, but that's not really good at picking up sarcasm or humor. But you should still try it as your first bet because it'll be able to identify how positive, neutral, or negative the tone of a video is. And after you realize, oh, it's not good at picking up humor, you can experiment with other sentiment analysis models or even build your own if you really want to get your hands dirty and experiment, as well as get a little bit more advanced in the field of NLP. Making a model that'll be able to accurately detect sarcasm is very hard, but I think it'll be a rewarding challenge for you guys to actually attempt to do so, even if you don't end up succeeding in the end. This is my favorite idea out of the bunch, mostly because it involves a lot of things, looking to code up to an API, pulling data from an API, cleaning it, and then building your own model, or just using the NLP model, and I'm a big fan of NLP personally. If you want to work with other people on your projects, then join my Discord server, link in the description down below, and find other like-minded people to work with. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.